today on Jason Academy Masterclass, we're going to talk about how your business can avoid some very hefty fines. Stay tuned. I'll see you in class. Hi everyone, I'm John C. Morley, serial entrepreneur, and welcome to another JC Academy Masterclass. It's great to be with you. We've been busy with a move and we have another move scheduled, but thank you so much for being here, making the choice to listen and watch, and also subscribe right here on YouTube, as well as all my other great social media uh, channels. By you doing that, that actually helps the social media algorithm to position us higher so that people like you can easily find our content. So first of all, I want to talk about the importance of filing your reports and paying them on time. So if you are uh, a business and you collect, for example, sales tax, well, you are required to file um, basically every quarter by June 20th, and you're also required to pay the sales tax due. Now, a little trick you have to file by that date. You can squeeze a little bit of time by waiting till the state actually sends you a bill and then you have to pay it by that due date. So if you're trying to you know, buy some time, you can file, but make sure you file your sales tax by the due date. You actually can file it as early as the last date of the month because that's when your sales end and then uh, you're doing this every quarter. Now, if you fail to file, you will get penalties from your state. If you don't pay on time, you'll get assessed some interest, okay? What's really important though, is that you don't forget to file your state income tax. And even more important, don't forget to file your income tax with the IRS, the Eternal Revenue Service, your Uncle Sam, you know him. And so what can happen if you are a C Corp or an S Corp, for example, or an entity that is not uh, a um, sole member proprietor or single member LLC, you can get hit with some pretty hefty fines. With an LLC, uh, there are fines. With an S Corp, there are fines. With a C Corp, in just New Jersey, uh, an S Corp and C Corp would get hit with a $220 penalty per month per registered officer that you have on file with the IRS. So you could see how that could add up to quite a few thousand dollars, whether it's one, whether it's two, and maybe you have 10, and um, that needs to be done. And if you don't do that, they're just gonna keep accumulating. So it's very important that you make sure you have your due diligence in order and that your accountant is ready to file by the appropriate time. If you don't do that, well, you're gonna be getting a nice love letter from Uncle Sam, uh, first letting you know that uh, you didn't file and then very quickly after that, you're actually gonna start getting a fine and they're gonna keep incurring. So if you can't file by the due date, right? Uh, and everyone knows um, March 15th, right? Um, if you don't have your taxes done by March 15th, you need to make sure that you file an extension with the IRS and also the uh, state. Now in New Jersey, if you file an extension with the IRS and it is accepted, you can submit that same um, document that usually comes by email back with uh, the return you filed for the state and it will not be late. If you don't submit that, well, then they'll start charging you fines and penalties as well. Now, the thing about this is you might say, well, gee, John, even though it's some money, I can always pay it. Well, if you don't pay it, it can become more serious. Uh, not only will fines accrue, and um, that's always fun, but they can even, after several letters, let you know that they intend to put a lien on your assets and your bank account. What does that mean? Well, the IRS, can then basically come in and help themselves to um, your assets, to your money, to pay off the debt, which was the penalty that you incurred all for not filing on time. 
It's also very important, ladies and gentlemen, that if you have payroll, that you use a reputable payroll company, making sure that they not only uh, file uh, the correct forms for new hires, um, and they also file uh, your quarterly forms and they pay them. In fact, if you are late with your payroll penalties, let's just say they get pretty steep. And you see, once you fall behind on these, people say, well, gee, I can just go to the IRS and I can ask them for an abatement. I'm gonna give you a secret. They will give you one abatement free if you've had consistent filing um, for at least roughly, um, let's say three to five years, they will abate the first one with no questions asked. Free, right off the record, without you having to do anything and just call and talk to them. I'll also give you another tip. When you call the IRS, don't call them during the day. Make sure you call them early in the morning. They open at 7 a.m. Uh, so you can set your alarm and be on there at 7 a.m. and you'll probably get through to speak to someone in less than a minute. That's the trick to get through to the IRS. Don't call them at lunchtime. Don't call them after a holiday. Don't call them a half hour before they're gonna close. Don't call them any time in the middle of the day because you may not speak to them and you'll be on hold for a very long time. And unfortunately, the call may just drop and you'll become even more frustrated. If you need to get something else abated, here's what you have to do. You have to file an abatement form. The abatement form needs to be um, sent back to the IRS uh, with the supporting documentation. And it usually takes about uh, four to six weeks, but you need to call them and let them know you're doing this so that they can uh, put your account on hold. Otherwise, they're gonna start taking the next steps and sending you another letter. And by the time they get to that fourth or fifth letter, well, pretty soon, uh, Uncle Sam's just gonna have a hand in your assets and just help themselves to whatever they want to pay off your debts. So it's very important that you take this seriously and what usually will happen is within that period, so if they told you that you're filing today the, um, let's say, letter for the abatement that you find on the IRS's website, and they say they're gonna give you four or six to six weeks for you to be able to you know, know and hear a response from them of a yes or no, they'll get back to you usually within a week or two, but sometimes longer. And you usually get a written letter back saying um, that we've reviewed your case, and if uh, this was like your your uh, first offense after that, and you have a good reason, the IRS is pretty reasonable, but they're not gonna tolerate flubs or people that think they can just get around this all the time. So you have to have a clear, convincing reason. Maybe there was a death in the family. Uh, maybe you got ill, or perhaps maybe there was an issue with your accountant. Make sure you document everything. Very, very important. When you document things and they go to the IRS, um, it definitely will stand up in your favor. Also the state of New Jersey. And when the state of New Jersey or any other state hears that you had a problem with the IRS, they sometimes will work with you because you had a situation. And again, don't just make up something like, you know, your dog got sick because you're gonna owe the money uh, right off the top. So make sure that you file on time. This is something I learned many years ago and it can cost you money that you need for other uh, resources in your business to uh, buy products or uh, to pay for rent or pay for other maintenance utilities. Just treat these filings with the utmost care. If you don't know what to file, please consult a tax professional. Um, we made a choice at our company to file our own sales tax, but if you don't feel comfortable, then have your uh, tax preparing organization take care of it for you. Make sure you get confirmation in writing. Just because they told you they did something doesn't mean they did it. If they're filing taxes for you and they do everything remotely and they send you documents, get copies of it, okay? This is very, very important. The last thing I wanna tell you is if you go to file a tax return and it's rejected, which can happen many times, uh, there's a lot of fraud going on. Uh, whether that's the state or that's the IRS, you need to go ahead and file an um, identity um, form that says that your identity was taken, and then you need to send that back to them certified return receipt mail. Now, once you do this, you might find that the state also rejects your application too. You'll know because if you owe any money, they actually uh, won't take the money either. And so when you've sent this form off to the state and you've sent it off to the IRS, 
um, certified return receipt mail, keep copies. Very, very important. And make sure you sign it because when you send the copy in um, by snail mail, you have to sign the document. Many people forget to do that. With the IRS, if you have been frauded, they have a service now you can request a PIN. And then either you or your tax provider must provide that PIN to file electronically. You might find out that um, somebody has filed something for a W-2 when you're actually a Schedule C. The good thing is when you catch it early, call the IRS, let them know. They know fraud happens, but they need to make sure that you have proof. So definitely document everything and they'll work with you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm John C. Morley, serial entrepreneur, and I hope that you'll take my advice so you don't get tariffed with all these unnecessary fees that could potentially put you out of business and there's no need for them. I thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe to this channel and subscribe to other channels. Like, love, and share my great content. And I'll see you in another JC Academy Masterclass real soon. To the success of you and your business always.